2708 Hannover Avenue. I think I'm on practically the same block as uh, Mr. Samuels. I uh, just wanted to say I've heard a lot about this uh, this piece of property, and I may be one of the few people in this room who has actually used it in the last few years. I, I play in the West Richmond Men's Church League that has been, I think, playing there since like World War II. Something like that. Anyways, I have scars on my knees I can show you from that outfield and from, from the pavement that is beyond there with where the school is. Uh, this, this has been neglected by the city clearly for a number of years. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I've heard a lot of opposition to this in a lot of different ways, and, and not take on any of them directly, but I, I don't seem to hear a lot of, based on the financial reality of the real estate market of debt. Um, Mr. Hilbert uh, said that, really want to thank him for his work on this. I, we basically have a $1.3 million net gain on the real estate value of this property. And it's really hard to imagine a better use for it, uh, given the proximity of St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, they're already what they have in the community, their reputation for what they've done. Uh, I really hate to mention the Redskins, <laughs> but I will. I, I live on Hannah Avenue. I commute almost 50 minutes to a rural county. Uh, I work in uh, county government, actually. And when we get to work, we talk about the Redskins. Uh, they're a big deal. And we're in Virginia, and you know they're in D.C., and, and there's often this, this, this concept of disconnect. We're like Cowboys fans that roam around. But you know, the reality is we, there is a connection here, and anything we can do to foster this, you know, we're not going to get an NFL team in Richmond. We're not going to get a Major League Baseball team. We couldn't even have a AAA team here. But we can have a training camp for one of the premier uh, you know, franchises in the NFL. And I know that's a little debatable, but we can go by, by some point. So I just want to say really strongly support. I want to thank Mr. Hilbert for your work on this. Um, we're really excited about it. It's, it's a great example of Richmond putting something together that's actually going to work and, and we can all get behind and, and be enthusiastic about it. So thank you. Thank you. Madam President, members of the Council, I'm Alex Hardis, the Director of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, uh, but I also serve as the co-chair of the Mayor's Task Force on Tourism. The Virginia Museum, as you probably know, is one of the ten largest comprehensive art museums in America. We're also the number one tourist attraction in Central Virginia. And I want to commend Council. I also want to commend the Mayor uh, and the City of Richmond for the foresight to forge a deal that's going to help the city in two very important areas. One, obviously, economic development. But what is of greatest interest to me is the idea of tourism as a vehicle for economic development. Uh, on Sundays, all you have to do for a home game is get on the 95. The, the interstate's crowded with people going to see the Redskins. I literally bleed crimson and, and, uh, and uh, black, or excuse me, and burgundy and Burgundy and gold. I can give you my colors straight. You think it's an army scene person, I would do it. But, my bad luck. Clearly, the, the economic development aspects of this, of bringing people to Richmond, Virginia, is no different than when we bring Chihuly or Picasso to the art museum. Or people come to the carpet. People come for the basketball tournaments. It's about building infrastructure. Everything we do to build tourism in Richmond, puts people to work, puts more money in the economy, and makes Richmond closer to the center of the universe. So congratulations on a, on a job well done, and we encourage you in this effort. Thank you. Thank you. President Raji, I know Vice President Ellen Robinson, my friend. Uh, and I hate to be up here after uh, hearing uh, Kim Gracely, because you won't find a more passionate supporter of Richmond Public Schools. My name is Bob Ardenbright. When I first heard the news of the Redskins Training Park, I was excited about the prospect of the positive impact this could make on our community. However, as the terms of the agreement began to unfold, it appeared that Richmond Public Schools was not going to benefit from this agreement, as I understood it. We had just come out of a bad, contentious situation with the school budget, and I had recently personally observed firsthand the terrible impact that the furlough days had had on our teachers and our principals. And I was not ready to look at what appeared to be a badly thought out proposal, one that excluded RPS. But coming tonight and hearing RPS mentioned so many times, it gives me great hope that maybe with the new school board, 
and a different approach to city council. Maybe we can put the children first with our kids. Could we have gotten a better deal? I can't second guess it. I know how much hard work had to go into it. But I do think that people need to remember that Bon Secours has been a tremendous partner in this community as well as Richmond Public School. And I think they do have the overall best interest of the community at heart. This will bring jobs to Richmond, but I would encourage you, just like we did in phase one of building the schools, that a certain amount of these jobs should be set aside for people that actually live in the community. And I would ask you to go back and audit how many of those jobs that went into the Oak Grove or Broad Rock School actually involved local people. And we ought to really put teeth into the fight on poverty too and target families that are struggling. Let them be invited to be part of the workforce as well. This, pro this uh, process, maybe somebody can second guess the speed of it. We can all be one to one quarterbacks. But I do appreciate the effort. And I do think we all have the best interest of our community in the heart. It is in the best interest of our children, and it is in the best interest of our citizens. And I would ask you to always use that as a, a question that you would use in addressing all this. And I think now that I've seen the enhancements, I can enthusiastically support what you're doing. Could, again, could we've gotten more? I can't second guess that, but I do applaud you for the efforts that you've given. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, members of the City Council. My name is Daniel. I'm president of the Rotary Club of Richmond. I know many of you through my other works around the community. I also want to thank uh, Councilman Hilbert for his efforts in helping to bring the uh, residents here to our Richmond community. Uh, I, however, I'm here tonight as a private citizen, and I'm actually here for twofold. Uh, the first being is that I'm a huge advocate of making Richmond a magnet for young professionals. Uh, other cities across Virginia are making investments uh, with an eye toward attracting and keeping young professionals in their communities. Uh, Norfolk built the first light rail system in the Commonwealth. Virginia Beach is in the running to get a professional NBA sports team. But Richmond has so much more to offer. How do we continue to convince the students that are getting ready to graduate from Virginia Commonwealth University, Virginia State University, or the University of Richmond to stay here in Richmond? As someone who came for VCU and stayed for RBA, it has to be more than what is within two hours of, the great, of our great community. It has to be what is here within the community of Richmond. Hosting the Redskins training camp with Robert Griffin III and Brian Radko will be one of those opportunities and cornerstone amenities that helps continue for uh, make Richmond stand out. And being home to an NFL training camp is one of the unique opportunities that will help solidify, solidify RBA's position as a great place to live among young professionals. And the second reason I'm here is just in case you can't tell with the bow tie and the burgundy shirt, I'm a huge Redskins fan. Nearly, nearly every season, I travel up back home to Northern Virginia, I grab uh, some dinner and beers with my three older brothers. We wake up the next morning, we go get breakfast, we head over to Loudoun County to watch the Redskins training camp. Usually we grab a bite to eat before uh, I head back on home down to Richmond. Uh, and I can tell you, I can tell you that come this summer, I'm looking for my brothers to come down here to Richmond. I'm looking for looking forward to grabbing dinner at B Show 27, breakfast at McLean's, before heading over to the old Broad Street station to watch RG3 and the Redskins prepare for their Super Bowl run. Everyone says that Richmond always has potential, but it's the opportunities that turn that potential into reality. Let's make the Richmond Redskins a reality. This past Thursday, the Super Bowl winning and former Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson called RG3 the NFL's most valuable player. Doesn't Richmond deserve to have, have the NFL's most valuable player come and spend time in our great community? Over the next eight years, as an advocate of Richmond, I want to thank you for your support and vote and bring the Redskins here. Thank you again for allowing me to speak and hail to the Redskins. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, President Graziano and to the city council members and the citizens of, citizens of Richmond, Virginia. I am the of Montgomery and um, I have currently lived in the 8th district for about 6 years. Uh, previously I lived in the 7th district for about 20 plus years. And that is why I'm in the support of the Washington Redskins and the Bond Secure Movement. Um, I'm in favor of the project because the East End is indefinitely 
I repeat, definite need of expansion to the Richmond Community Hospital. Not only am I in favor of expansion, but I am also in favor of medical, fitness, wellness centers, a blood pressure center, sedition offices as well. This project will also create over 100 plus new jobs in the city of Richmond, which are badly, badly needed. City Councilman uh, Herbert's paper, it was very uh, compromising and more reasonable than anything that I've heard and anything provided supporting or giving more monies to education for children, I'm all for that. But it is time now for us to put all of our egos aside. It is time for us to move Richmond forward. And the biggest question that I would like to ask you is when are we going to become a 21st century city? There is no need to talk about it. Let's just move ahead and get this project done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening as a member of the council. Vice um, right, so President uh, Graziano. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert, uh, for that uh, noble gesture and working hard on the paper. But first of all, I'd like to say to you all, um, I'm a lifelong resident of Churchill. Been there all my life, and um, ultimately, I think this is a great deal. But as a child growing up, seeing John Reagan running, Charlie Brown, I won. Mark Griffin, Doug Williams, Joe Theismann, uh, just seeing Joe Jacoby, me emulating him. That was number 66, but I was 76. But I was a Redskins fan from the day I was born. Excuse me, sir. Can you please let us know your name? I said, I'm uh, Roderick Bullock. I was a Redskins fan since the day I was born. I would cut off my right arm to go to a Redskins park. And it was back then, it was in Frostburg, and when I was a child. And I always, Envision going to a Redskins some um, training camp and going to a Redskins football game. I also had a chance to go to our training camp this year to see RG3. I stayed there for about three days, and ultimately I saw the impact that it had on in that in that vicinity. And there was a lot of people from Richmond, from Chesterfield, and from Durango that made that trek. They stayed two weeks and weeks at a time and used that summer vacation to go to the summer camp, to train the camp. And ultimately to see RG3 in person was the greatest feeling in the world. I had a, a chance to see him against the um, Eagles. And I just want to tell you that this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Let's not fumble the ball. Let's move forward. Let's get this done. Let's make it happen. I'm telling you the, the impact and the economic impact that is going to happen to Richmond is not foreseen now, but ultimately it's going to be a paid big dividend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Todd. My name is Gavin Carr. I live in the first district of Richmond, probably about two miles from the West Hampton School site and also about the same distance from where the Redskins were playing. Um, I came tonight because I, I do support the overall deal. And, the one, I think it's an exciting thing for Richmond. I think it's great for the region. I think it will be very good for all the small businesses in Richmond who will be serving the Redskins and the people who come to see the training camp. The one drawback to the deal, as I had read about it in the paper, was the, the situation with the money to the schools. So I was really pleased tonight to come and we learned from Councilman Hilbert that the changes that were made to the proposal to, to allow the schools to receive the money they would have received if the site had been sold. And I think that the deal as described sounds like it is, it is perfect for the school. So I think y'all are to be commended for taking the extra step to go back and try to rework the deal. I think the bond supporters and the Redskins all should, should be commended for their efforts to try to uh, make it right for the school system. I think Tim Gray made a good point that I hope this is not the way that we'll approach future instances in which property is surplus uh, from the school system. But for, for this deal, I think this is a very exciting time for the city and for the region, and it's exactly the kind of economic development that, that we should be working on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Uh, it's David Napier again. Thanks again. If this, I'll have to leave shortly, so let me just say that I support the rest of the process to bring the, the rest of here. But if this, if this just fixed and help get the East End Hospital for what it needs. I go up there, I'm up there a couple times a week. Uh, we take them some meals when they get too busy. It's small, small lunches and stuff. These guys are running around like crazy and it's always crowded. And uh, it's really important to think about the East End and not just the West End. I mean, think as a city as a whole, 
what this could mean. And the schools, they're going to need money every year. They're going to come to you every year. They're going to come to the city administration every year. You have 30 seconds. Please begin to summarize. Oh, thank you. I don't think so. Go ahead. <laughs> I think you're taking somebody else's. Never mind. Uh, re re reoccurring revenue every year is what this is about for the schools. Um, and the city has, I think, shown us its commitment to capital improvements of the schools, and I don't think anybody in this room, 100% um, people, I'm sure, support the schools. It's just a question of the best way to do it and build a bigger and better city to do so. So thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your comments. Have a good night. All right, I'm bring this back to council for discussion. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.